Good evening. I'm Father Rob Slocum, priest in partnership with the Church of the Ascension Episcopal Church in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And tonight we celebrate Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, our Lenten season, a time of penitence and preparation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I chose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not hide yourselves from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry to satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall be raised up by the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins. And heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave. And crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things. And your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness. And judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses. And his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. 
for he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower in the field. When the wind goes over, it is gone. And its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him. And his righteousness upon children's children. On those who keep his covenant. And remember his commandments and do them. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. And his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding. And hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts. You ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Glory to the, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This night we begin the new season, the season of Lent, the season beginning with this evening of Ash Wednesday. 
And in it, we are reminded. We're reminded of our fallibility, of our imperfection. As St. Paul says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the human condition. Sometimes I've encountered people who thought of themselves as perfect or thought they should be perfect. And that's just it's not a healthy attitude. We're not perfect in ourselves. We're not going to be. And if we set up a standard of perfection, we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment. If we judge others relative to that standard, we're setting them up for <laughs> disappointment or judgment. We seek completion beyond ourselves, completion in our Lord who comes to us and gives us mercy, gives us forgiveness, gives us love, grace, inspiration. But sometimes we need to be reminded that we don't do this for ourselves. We are not our own Savior, uh, as we say. It is He that has made us, God who has made us, and not we ourselves. We're the sheep of the pasture. We need God beyond us. And sometimes we can fall into an illusion of self-sufficiency, an illusion of perfection. And we need to be reminded that's not how it works. That's just not how it works. So we need help from beyond ourselves. And if we delude ourselves into thinking we don't, then we really do have a problem. So this season comes to us a time to remember our shortcomings and to try to do something about them. Sometimes these days, it seems like people have gotten really good at confessing other people's sins and not their own. So this is a time to remind us that we look to ourselves, we change ourselves. Even outside Christian tradition, I'm told Gandhi once said, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. So if you're distressed by what you see in the world, root that distress away from yourself. Don't com be complicit in it. Don't be part of it. If you're concerned by dishonesty in the world, be honest. If you're concerned by cruelty in the world, be compassionate, be empathetic. If you're concerned by people being selfish and holding on to things for themselves instead of sharing generally, be generous to reach out beyond yourself. So in this Lent, it's customary to take on a discipline. A discipline is like being a disciple. A disciple is a follower. So the discipline we take on isn't for some kind of self-punishment or some wagging a finger in your face. You haven't done enough. Oh gosh, I haven't. But rather to try to look beyond ourselves, to look at ourselves to see what can we do differently. And that doesn't have to mean taking away something like, what are you going to give up for Lynn? Everybody wants to talk about, what are you giving up for Lynn? I'm sure you've heard me say many times when I was a kid growing up in uh, the Episcopal Church, I would always hear about people giving up chocolate for Lynn. I wonder, what's wrong with chocolate? I mean, why does everybody give up chocolate for Lynn? Well, <laughs> Let me say there's nothing wrong with chocolate in and of itself. It's delicious. I may have some later tonight. But if whatever it is gets in the way of your relationship with God, then it's time to look at that, to maybe change your relationship to it. And if chocolate is getting in the way of your relationship with God, you are worshiping chocolate instead of God, then by all means, this is a good time to give that up. But I find that Sometimes our obstacles are subtler than that. They are more pervasive than that. So maybe instead of chocolate, maybe this is a good time to look at what you might take on to live a better life as a member of the body of Christ, a representative, an example of the faith that we are called to share and make known in the world. So. Maybe instead, what can each of us do to show more generosity, to show more forgiveness, to show a willingness to reach out to others, even those different from ourselves, a willingness to put aside illusions of our superiority as a, a group or people or gender or whatever, that we're all in this boat together. We all are mortal. We are all fallible. We are all in need of the grace of God, and we can help ourselves along the way. So we try to be authentic. The readings today, the gospel reading, for example, reminds us Jesus warns against hypocrisy. So 
Don't make a show of your generosity. Don't make a show of, of what it is that you're trying to change. That can, in a sense, be between you and God. If you need the help and support of others, if you want to talk about the steps you've taken and ask for help, that's great. You don't have to make it a secret in that sense, but not as something that you're beating your chest about. Look at me, I'm so good, I'm better than others. So we point beyond you know, some token observance, like we give up chocolate for Lent. Instead, look at ways you want to change your life and the ways you find, I hope, you'll want to continue. It's not like, wow, Easter has come. Now we'll give all that up and go back to the life we were living before. Rather, if you find a way that helps you to live a more authentic Christian life, a more full life as a human being, as a Christian, as a child of God, then why would you want to give it up for Easter? By God, continue it. Continue it. Let it be a part of your life. We're told that a 40-day period can be a very helpful period for changing a behavior, for changing a habit, for letting it become ingrained in a way that sticks with you and lasts. So in this season, this tradition, this historic season where Christians prepared for baptism, those who had been separated from the church for notorious sins were put through a process by which they confessed their sins and were forgiven and reincorporated into the life of the church. Let us all share in that. Let us all find ourselves forgiven work through those things that come between us and God, remove the obstacles, get rid of the stumbling blocks so we can know our Lord better, we can live the lives we are called to live in love through this Lent and all of our lives. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitent fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of the Holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
return to your dust, and to dust you shall return. We'll say together Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. And in your great, great compassion, compassion blot out, out my offenses. offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for deep speech within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And now say the litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those who are fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. 
by the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life may hereafter be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.